Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I greatly appreciate the high level of collegiality that we've experienced here, which did not come as a surprise to me because I've been to your meetings before. But um, it's not lost on me that we have made proposals to the organization asking you to move off some of your positions. Uh, these were entertained and discussed and will continue to be discussed. And uh, it is appreciated. We asked our horsemen's organizations to prepare letters explaining their view on these two substances, and I have them here. I'm going to hand them in for the record uh, to Ed Martin later. And as you would expect, uh, they're consistent with our position. But what I want to bring to your attention is we heard from 15 uh, horsemen's organizations in 13 different states. There are only 16 states that have harness racing commissions. And the point I want to make is that the attention that's focused by our industry on the work of RCI and the commissions on these issues is more intense than I've seen in a long time, perhaps more so than ever. And so uh, for that reason also, I'm grateful for the uh, collegiality that RCI has shown. Now, uh, I want to respectfully request that you help me uh, in the follow through from all this because, the, for instance, in harness racing, when something goes wrong or someone is dissatisfied, it's normally the USTA's fault and we hear about it, whether it's our fault or not. And uh, I am fighting the perception in some quarters that RCI is a monolithic and unresponsive organization. I would never accuse you of that. But in the aftermath of this process that we're now involved in, please, if there are questions that we've not answered, specify what those are. If there are issues that remain unresolved, make sure that those are identified. If there's re pending research that might be of interest, uh, please mention it and we'll do our best to um, follow through with that. If there are any specific questions for me, I'll try to answer them. Otherwise, that's the end of my comments for today. I'm sorry I don't have a uh, PowerPoint, but as you can see, I'm a little long in the tooth. I'm kind of like a dinosaur. But so I have to make my own notes, and you're going to have to listen. I'm sorry. Uh, HRMC, I want to just get to what caused the formation of HRMC. First, it was the knowledge that some medication thresholds were advanced to regulators, which were inappropriate for any performance model, be it harness or thoroughbred. The original Flunixin recommendations in New York come to mind on that score. The knowledge that positive tests were being called based upon regulations that best fit a performance model not appropriate to that of the harness racing model. Unfortunately for us, coming from RCI, many jurisdictions adopted those blindly to our breed as a one-size-fits-all solution, ignoring the differences. The knowledge that some jurisdictions, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Delaware, some with separate commissions for each breed, some not, were tuned in early enough to recognize the need for different withdrawal times and thresholds for some medications to suit that the specific form performance model for each of the breed actually existed. Like the, like the medication proposals we put forth today for clenbuterol, 96 hours at 20, 25 picograms per ml threshold and beta-methasone, six and a half days at 100 picograms per ml that are already in place in some jurisdictions and need to be approached on the basis of uniformity with your help for our breed. To my knowledge, our, our use of these medications is not, is not contradicted by any studies. We ask that you advance our proposals. As you heard, the USDA's president, Russell Williams, started a dialogue at the USDA as to what the USTA could do about this problem. Since no one heard our past or more recent pleas for separate rules, 
pleas made endlessly before and after our frustration erupted on September the 27th, 2013, culminating in the withdrawal of all support for RMTC. What grew out of all of this was the realization that it was we who were partly at fault. Our industry had held on too long to the hope that our participation with RMTC would eventually lead to the recognition that the needs of our breed, based upon its differences and our performance model, would be addressed. That sadly did not appear as an attainable goal, and hopefully is a, it is an attainable goal now. Today, HRMC is comprised of highly respected and recognized individuals, scholars, pharmacologists, practicing standard bred veterinarian horsemen, and others whose mission we gave them was to come up with proposals for the ethical use of medications that fit our, our performance model, the differences in our, our breed, and were consistent with the integrity of our races and the welfare of our equine charges. Our breed has many differences that seem recognizable only to us. The standard bread has a different gait. Commissions, whether combined or split between harness and thoroughbred, have different medication regulations because we are different. Corticosteroids and clenbuterol have different rules. We have every reason to believe that our horses are physiologically different from the thoroughbred. We are a sturdier breed than the thoroughbred. We race on an average of every seven to 10 days, so we can't use things like clenbuterol for this repartitioning or partitioning effect. Because if we did, as my horseman would say, you're going to blow the box. So that's impossible. In the way we use clenbuterol is right after a horse races to clean them out. And we don't use it on a day-to-day -day basis to have the effect that's been addressed here by the sciences. I'm not a scientist. Our horses are consistently raced over far less of a cushion and on harder, unforgiving surfaces. Our breakdown rates are a statistical rarity by comparison to our counterparts. In New York, we compiled data over a two-year period. Our catastrophic injury rate measured 38 casualties over 180,000 races, less than two one-hundredths of one percent, compared to a measured 300 fatalities over 53,000 thoroughbred races during the same period. There are significant differences in our breed. And there are more harness races than thoroughbred contests, despite the fact that the annual standard bred foal crop is one-third the size of the thoroughbred yield. Lastly, and most importantly, harness veterinary practice demands treatments being applied to joints bilaterally, contralaterally, and to address diagonal lameness, necessitating, for example, the use of more betamethasone to be efficacious. Withdrawal times and thresholds that prevent the harness vet from the ability to employ the medications in his or her armamentarium in the treatment of his or her patient is just plain wrong. That implies the ability to employ medications that would be employed consistent with what the vet has learned in veterinary school, with his expertise, and that fits the brief performance model. There is no data, to my knowledge, on betamethasone, for example, to support the RMTC thresholds that have been imposed any more than to contradict the recommendations that come from years of our practical experience in harness racing and the recommendations of our experts at HRMC. What harm has been done? I'm, I'm a practicing attorney. I've been practicing in the horse racing business since I was first admitted over 40 years ago. Personally, I've seen too many people get hurt by the implementation of thresholds that questionably may not even be best suited to either model, as well as cases that were not fully prosecuted on the other side of the coin because they could not be properly supported when challenged. 
for the racing industry as a whole. I don't care whose side you're on. That ain't good. Example, the Massachusetts case where the 10 picogram threshold for beta methasone against the generally accepted standard of veterinary care given a harness horse resulted in the trainer suffering a severe penalty. A similar currently pending case at Plain Ridge Racecourse is in progress at this time. Beta methasone and the Delaware case against a prominent thoroughbred horseman. The Kentucky court decision pointing to the consequences of confidentiality. And the Florida thoroughbred trainers and owners who were penalized on the threshold levels that were advanced through this body originally set too low. The basic underlying problem for us festered due to our own inertia. I'm talking about harness racing because it was based upon the expectation that we would be recognized as different in many ways. We should have realized earlier on, I think, what on hindsight was clear, that we were not going to be recognized as a separate breed, and that spawned the creation of HRMC. From this point on for us, I can tell you there is no retreat. We come here as the central voice for our breed, armed with the knowledge base, at the very least equivalent to that of any other, any other such as RMTC. HRMC is an invaluable source of verifiable, verifiable data necessary for the proper and specific regulation of harness racing. Our primary concern is the proper veterinary care to be given our horses that our performance model and breed which is much different than that, and our efforts should not be discarded, but rather embraced for our breed and our breed alone. HRMC can be an invaluable tool and must enjoy an equal footing at the table before RCI. And neither RMTC nor HRMC should have veto power over what is deemed appropriate veterinary treatment selected as necessary in the treatment of a particular patient in a breed consistent with its racing model. We have come here to build a bridge, as our president said, not to destroy one. We have labored long and hard for over one year, and hopefully our experts will satisfy all your concerns and some good will come from all of our work. We are not posing or imposing our will on your breed, we do not want your breed to impose your will upon ours. I would like to thank all of the dedicated people uh, who have freely given their time, freely given their time and effort over the course of one year to help HRMC come to this point. I want to thank you very much for your patience and listening, and hope that you will give a chance to our experts to make any contribution to the science part of this debate. Thank you. Any questions?